Hey everybody, I'm Justin Bone. And I'm Mike Val. And this is the Bone and Zano Zone, where we are always on the lanes, off the charts, and on the mic. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our fourth episode of the Bone and Zano Zone podcast. We have some very exciting stuff for you today, but first off, we want to thank our sponsors, Bull for Life and Bullwitch.com. But we are going to spoil you a little bit with our first ever guest. A superstar over the last 20 years going into legend status, the 2002 Rookie of the Year, 2006 Player of the Year, one of only three people to do so, owner of 20 PBA Tour titles, and the 27th person ever to shoot 300 on TV. The newest inductee into the PBA Hall of Fame, the Bone and Zona Zone welcomes Tommy Jones. Tommy, Tommy, how you doing today? Tommy, welcome. Good. Thanks for having me, guys. Pleasure, my friend. Thank you for taking some time. So, uh... I'm moving. I'm in the process of moving into a new home, and uh, Justin bowled a tournament this weekend. Uh, what'd you do over the weekend, bud? Uh, I, I had like an out of body experience, uh, fairy tale ending to an amazing week. But uh, yes, I mean, I don't know if you could even draw up what happened, but uh, the way it all played out was just uh, absolutely amazing. So, for those of you who don't know, Tommy was inducted into the Hall of Fame this weekend won the Hall of Fame Classic and shot 300 in the title match on dual patterns with two different bowling balls. Just go through the motions. Describe what it was like. Well, it was a lot of crazy things that happened that uh, some people don't even know behind the scenes. I, I mean, I don't consider myself to be uh, Walter Ray of 95 shooting spares or anything, but by any means, but uh, I feel like I'm a pretty good spare shooter. And... Uh, on Friday in match play, I was having some issues hanging on to the ball. I guess changing the thumb hole back and forth between the two uh, the two lanes. I couldn't hang on to it shooting a spare. I missed five single pins on Friday. Is, oh wow! I, I I can't remember the last time I missed five spares on a block, more or less five single pins. And uh, you know, didn't lead. Missed leading by like twenty pins. So it's kind of crazy how that all played out. And then uh, so going through the motions of being agitated about that, but then. Uh, had that happened, had I led, I probably wouldn't have won because I didn't get to the ball that I ended up using on the right lane at any point during the week. So, uh, you know, it was just uh, meant to be, I guess. And that what, or a couple of people have heard, that was the first show that your mom has ever been at. Describe yeah, what that was like for us. That was pretty cool. My mom doesn't like to travel, so uh, it was the first time that she's ever come to a PBA show. Um, it was an absolute blast. The fact that she was there, um, can't say enough about you know what that experience was like. Uh, her and my child were there, so um, I guess I was more nervous because they were there than I was, uh, you know, thinking about the fact that uh, what was actually going on. That's awesome, man. So more news coming in the past couple months with this acquisition of Brunswick and EBI, and knowing you're an EBI guy forever. Um, the Bolero series, you you took that down, throwing some Brunswick stuff. So, what's your thoughts on the acquisition and the new equipment that you got in your hands? You got seven brands uh, in your hands. What do you think about it? Yeah, I have a lot of bowling balls to choose from. Um, it's it's definitely overwhelming and a little confusing, but uh, you know the guys, the ball reps, uh, the people at Brunswick, they've been great with it, trying to help us with with the. Uh, learning some of the stuff, knowing when to throw what bowling ball how, and, and the times and everything. So that's been really good. It's just uh, trying not to confuse ourselves and going out there and going, all right, I'm going to throw this one, this one, this one, this one, just kind of slowly implementing balls. But uh, so far, so good. The uh, I've used a lot of the, the prism hybrids and uh, the melee jabs. Those balls have been really good. So uh, hopefully I uh, continue those, uh, you know, getting a ball in here and a ball in there and uh, getting to know the balls a little bit more. Yeah, so I, on the Elite Series show, you threw a Hero and a Jab, and then on the Hall of Fame Classic show, you threw a Prism Hybrid and a Purple Hammer. So, Correct. obviously, you've liked these balls. Do you expect the balls to get any better over time? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think they have, uh, you know, they inherited the uh, person that did the bowling balls at Ebonite, Randy Tightlock. He's come over, a uh, very smart individual, so hopefully he can continue to help... Uh, grow uh, all the brands
fans that are now under the Brunswick umbrella. And uh, I look forward to the future and hopefully uh, being able to be more involved with uh, all of that stuff down the road. So with that and all that good stuff you just said, so what are your expectations on the 2020 season? Obviously, we know you want to get another title or two, but what, what do you want to see now as a Hall of Famer? I mean, do your expectations kind of grow because you're in that elite status now? What, what do you want to see for the rest of the season? No, I, I, mean, I pretty much approach every tournament the same way. I approach every tournament with the, the goal to go out there and make the show and win. And, um, you know, my body's healthy again, which is definitely makes it feel like it's a lot uh, a lot more feasible than it has in the past. But uh, with, a, with a healthy body, I'm just out there trying to uh, – trying to make shows and uh, give my give my chance opportunities to win and you know now at the end of the year you got the big playoff thing so just so much so so much so many different exciting things on the PBA tour right now so because of the absolute insane start that you had to the season do your expectations change going into the season as in like the playoffs player of the year any of those things come to your mind this early no, not really. It's way too early to tell. You know, we're going to bowl uh, a lot of a lot of events, uh, a lot of dual pattern events too. So, you know, right now it's just trying to learn one balls, paying attention to what's going on around me, the surroundings, and and talking to the other staffers and letting the ball reps and everything kind of filter things into place so I can uh, make the best uh, best shots and just be up there, and not worrying about the the background noise. So, Tommy, a little bit about me here. So, I'm a, I'm a big baseball guy, right? And um, there's a baseball player, uh, this guy, Mookie Betts, the center fielder for the Red Sox. And uh, he bowled last week, and he's bowled a couple stops in, in the World Series. So, I mean, he, he throws it well. So, with multi-sport athletes, you know, baseball, football, whatnot, do you think Mookie, uh, if he ever hung up the cleats and put on a pair of Dexters full-time, do you think he could uh, get a banner down the road? Uh, you know, he would have to do a little bit of bowling, but I don't doubt anything that Mookie wants to do. He's by far the uh, the best athlete I've ever been around in my entire life. It's incredible the things that he can do. Um, so I wouldn't say no, but, uh, you know, he's, in the meantime of him out there playing baseball and doing all that stuff, he's definitely losing, uh, losing some time to it. But Burkett's, you know, they're competitive people and they love to bowl and they love to compete, which is the most important thing. And he's not going to go out there and do anything that he's that he's not good at. And, and I know you won um, the Chris Paul doubles with him a couple of years ago. So would would you say he's probably the best non bowler bowler that you've ever seen, or celebrity bowler that you that you ever been around? Yes, one hundred percent. There's no question on that. So then, you agree that Mookie Betts is good for the sport of bowling? Oh, absolutely. He's. Uh, you know he's good for anything he's a great person on and off the lanes he's you know just you don't hear anything bad about him um he loves the ball so he approaches it the right way he's very respectful to us and all the other bowlers and um you know i, I, I anytime he shows up and bowls it's awesome for us so he uh, and this is just a me being a goofball here so he comes to your office for a week and he bowls a stop and uh, he wants to be like you guys right so do you think you could, or which bowler on tour do you think could uh, go trade places and play professional baseball for a week and do what he does for a living? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I don't know. I would have to, at one point, I would have had to say that, that uh, there was a few of us that played baseball growing up. Rash was a good baseball player. DJ Arch was a good baseball player. I was a pretty good baseball player. But, uh, you know, you go up there and, and go to some of the games – and uh, it's it's crazy how good they are, and you can see the things that they go through. It's 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 legit nuts. Well, we cannot thank you enough for your time, Tommy. But we are almost out of time with you, so we want to say thank you for joining us, and uh, hopefully we'll see you sometime down the road. We want to wish you the best of luck this year, and for as many years as you have to come. And we'll catch up with you when you come to Carolier later this year in Jersey, definitely. Sounds good, guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks. Thank you, Tommy. Well, we cannot thank Tommy Jones enough for joining us today. But, Mike, that was that was pretty fun, wasn't it? That was pretty fun. It's not every day you get to talk to uh, bowling royalty and uh, Hall of Famers. So, uh, yeah, I want to thank Tommy again for coming on and giving him a couple minutes. It was really cool, and hopefully everybody out there enjoys it. So, um, on to other news here. Um, heard you made a, uh, a vlog here, Justin. Why don't you uh, tell everybody about your vlog and... Yeah, so what a vlog is too. So, for those of you who don't know what a vlog is, 
it is basically a, a video blog basically just a video describing what you're doing where you're going what you're eating all the, all the good stuff so I made or in our last episode we had discussed my trip to Malaysia and for those of you who wanted a little bit more insight well I made a video for you guys um, it dropped a couple of days ago and it's all over YouTube or not all over YouTube but on my YouTube page look up my name Justin Bone and it is titled Bowling in Malaysia vlog number one so if you guys want to go check it out and uh, tell me what you guys think I want to hear your thoughts and uh, hey Mike yes sir I got vlog number two coming out very soon vlog number two is on the way so if you guys are into that kind of thing please go check out my YouTube channel and uh, there's definitely going to be some very exciting things on there in the future to come. 2020 is going to be a big year. And that's why you are the social media king. Well, I'm getting there. Baby steps. Keep, keep in mind, that was vlog number one. That was vlog number one. All right, I'm losing track of these vlogs. All right. So, <laughs> so let's get into it. Team USA Team Trials. Yes. Team USA Team Trials was the first week of January. Started January 2nd. There were 339 people who bowled Team USA Trials. And we have decided to give you a rundown of every single player on Team USA 2020. It won't be that painful, so it'll be nice and quick. Yeah, so we're going to start off with the men's adult team. Men's adult team. First, the Team USA men's trials champion, Monmouth County's own Matt Russo. Monmouth County, New Jersey, for those who don't know, he is a local guy from our neck of the woods. Um, congratulations to Matt. Yeah, we cannot be more proud of him for what he's done for Team USA so far, and we wish him the best of luck with everything, everything. in the future. Next up, U.S. Amateur Champion Cameron Crow, Nick Pate, Mike Martell, Kyle Sherman, Andrew Anderson, A.J. Johnson, Kyle Troop, Marshall Kent, E.J. Tackett, Chris Prather, and Jacob Buttruff. That is a modern-day murderer's row of bowlers right there. Yes, that is, that's a pretty good list, and so... For those of you who don't know how some of these people get selected because you you see not all of these guys bowl Team USA trials. Mm -hmm. So the top s or so many off of the earnings list in the top 25, six players get selected off of that list from the PBA's earning list of 2019. Then the top four automatics based on points get selected to the team. Two other bowlers get selected who competed in team trials and the U.S. Amateur Champion, and if the Uf U.S. Amateur Champion was in the top four, it goes to spot number five. It, it sounds complicated, but it's not that complicated. It's no. pretty easy. So the way that the points, the point system that I refer to, is you get one po you get a point for what place you finish on that day. So like if you lead the day, finish first, you get one point, finish second, you get two points, and so on down the list. So basically, the lesser amount of points you accumulate throughout the week, the better it is for the overall total of the tournament. Yeah, so like, for example, Matt Russo led with 50-something points. That's what I'm going to go with. So, but that is your men's adult team, junior, or not junior, adult, men's, men's adult. I'm sorry, it's been a long day. It's been a long day, yeah. Team USA 2020. Now let's get right over to the women. Let's go to the ladies. We, first off, we have to say a record was broken on the women's side this year. Kelly Kulik. Women's Team USA Trials champion with a record-breaking 13 points. So going back to how we just described the point system, five days of bowling, five different patterns, she accumulated 13, 13 points, points in she, five days. She led three days, finished third and seventh. Let's just put it to you guys politely. She crowbarred the field in Vegas. Yeah. She absolutely oh. murdered them. And by the way, back-to-back -back Team USA Trials champions. Kelly Kulik is a, a a force to be reckoned with. Absolutely, and she went to my alma mater, Moorhead State. She's also a Jersey girl, so uh, kudos to Kelly. And uh, we will be we'll, we'll be talking to Kelly in the near future. But uh, amazing week for an amazing person. Yep. And let's go down the list. Brianna Clemmer was the U.S. Amateur Champion this year, and to go on down the list: Sydney Brummett, Lauren Pate, Shannon O'Keefe, Julia Bond, Brianna Cote, Jasmine Mason, Shannon Pluhowski. Missy Parkin, Danielle McEwen, Liz Culkin, Jordan Richard, Josie Barnes, and Stephanie Johnson. So again, the same way as the men's team, same way as the women's team, except off of the PWBA standings. So again, the modern day murderers row of those women there. You don't want to mess with them. You got you got a couple of past 
experience There's on lot, Team USA. A lot of experience there. And you got a, a ton of fresh out of college, very young, hungry, re- hungry kids with yeah. a lot of talent. This is um, they are going to be forced to be reckoned with, and they are great representations of the U.S. and what amateur and professional bowling in the women's ranks are. So, congratulations to all the ladies. All right. Next off, we have Junior Team I'm a, USA. I'm going to let you handle this because you know the Junior Bowlers more than I do. Right. I'm an old man, so uh, I'll, Justin, I'll, take it away. I'll keep going. Juniors, for the boys, U.S. Amateur Champion Cameron Crow was a junior who won the amateur title. And the other two guys who made the amateur step ladder, Solomon Salama and Alex Linsky. Alex Linsky coming out of PA. And to go on down the list, Spencer Robarge, TJ Rock, Tyrell Ingalls, Cortez Shank, Anthony Nyer, Sorrell Cardines, Peyton Smith, Daniel Chin, and Alec Keplinger. I know two people on that list. Two? That's it? Yeah, only two. Anthony Nyer and Solomon. I met Solomon um, in Las Vegas two years ago um, when we were out there, actually. And uh, he was bowling out there. Phenomenal talent. They're all our um, nice kid, really good kid. But uh, it's going to be a big year because it is a World Youth Championships year. Where is that this year? I have no idea. Okay, to be determined. I thought you might have known that. No, that was a bad question, Mike. Sorry. It's okay. There is no bad question. The, one, the question you don't ask is the bad question. All right, I'll forgive you. All right, let's go to the girls. All right, girls. I know two girls on the list, too. You want to say the first one? Um, Cameron Peters. You want to say the second one? Um, her sister. Paige Peters. Paige Peters. Paige bowled phenomenal this week. She led the juniors... Made the U.S. Amateur step ladder and finished third in, on the U.S. Amateur side. Congratulations to Paige. She bowled phenomenal yeah, all week. Absolutely. To go on down the list, did you want to say something? No, go right ahead. All right. <clears throat> Annalise O'Brien, Cassidy Corey, Marissa Carey, Crystal Elliott, Cameron Peters, like we mentioned earlier, Mabel Cummins, Jillian Martin, Elise Chambers, Faith Welch, Angelique D'Alessandro, Taylor Davis, and Patricia Rosales. Uh, again, just phenomenal talents, all of them. Great representations of the oh, youth and programs, and they they are they got a lot of things happening for them. They got a lot of a, a very bright future ahead of all of them. For all and of them. Uh, there was a, another record broken: the youngest girl ever to make Junior Team USA, Jillian Martin, qualified for Junior Team USA at she, age fourteen. She led Junior Gold this year in the U twenty division at fourteen years old. That's right, I remember I read about her. She bowled up two divisions and led Junior Gold. That's pretty impressive. That is uh, that's pretty impressive to do. So though that is your USBC Team USA boys, girls, men, women, and everything in between. Come get some international bowling. That's what I got to say. Yeah, it's definitely going to be an exciting year for Team USA as every single team this year has a lot of good players, yeah. new and old. They have some new. There's new blood there. There is phenomenal coaching and. The mentorship that the coach of the Team USA gives these guys and gals, it is just, it's above and beyond anything. So, huge year for Team USA. Aside from all that, I uh, want to break somebody's uh, you-know-what over here. What Mr. Michael Valenzano has a birthday coming up. How old are you, 47 and a half? Uh, no comment, sub- I see. Okay. Subtract that by 10. All right, well, no comment, I see. But, uh. I will be 37 this year. I'll be 37 as of tomorrow. Well, then, happy birthday, Michael. And thank you very much, Justin. That means a lot to me. I have 20 years on you. Oh, the pain. Well, uh, Mike, I think that wraps up our fourth episode. Yeah, it's getting late, and uh, the clock on the wall says it's uh, it's almost past my bedtime. I'm an old man. Yeah, it's past my bedtime for sure. But, uh, hey, we talked to Tommy Jones. We did talk to Tommy Jones. And we talked about Team USA Trials. Talked about Team USA Trials. And we talked about some vlogging. And we talked about some vlogging. On our next show, we'll recap the PBA tournament in Oklahoma. Yep. And we will preview the next couple PBA stops, a couple majors on the horizon. And uh, you never know who's going to stop by next. Uh, Big Tom, f- Tommy was a good first guest. Yep. Big February coming up on the PBA tour. But for now, I'm Justin Bone. I am Mike Val. And this is the Bone and Zano Zone, where we are always on the lanes, off the charts, and on the mic. Take care. Destiny was on his side. Strike to claim it. A strike to claim it. And...